Hey everyone! Today we're diving into a very important topic, UI and UX mistakes in Flutter apps that can turn even good code into a bad product. We'll cover four mistakes, detailed explanations, real examples, and of course, how to avoid them. You can get all the code for these mistakes and their fixes by messaging me on Instagram with the phrase, code mistakes. Let's go! Mistake 1. Overloaded screen without structure or hierarchy. This is a classic problem for all Flutter beginners, and not just Flutter, but any mobile developer. What do most beginners do? They open scaffold, put a column, and start stuffing everything into it. Texts, buttons, images, lists, links, icons, all on the same screen, all crammed together. As a result, when the user opens your screen, they get overwhelmed. Where should they look? What's important? What's the action? What are you asking them to do? Yes, the examples in this video will be slightly exaggerated, but that's to make the difference easier to see. So, how do we fix this? In Flutter, this is very simple to solve. First, we'll use a list view instead of a column. Then, we'll add spacing using widgets like sized box and padding. We'll also break the content into different sections using widgets like card, expansion tile, etc. Highlight the main action button. Place it at the bottom right as a floating action button. And probably most important, make your headings stand out. The title should be bold and large. Descriptions, gray and small. Action button, bright and colorful. Remember, a good screen is one where the user instantly understands what to do. Mistake 2. Inconsistent component styles. Here's another common Flutter developer problem. In one place, rounded buttons. In another, square ones. Elsewhere, completely different colors. Font size is 18 on one screen, 12 on another. One screen uses material style, the next suddenly uses Cupertino. As a result, the user feels something's off, like they're using two different apps. Why does this happen? Because Flutter makes it quick and easy to throw together an interface. You made one button, it's blue. On another screen, you made a new button, now it's red. You added a text field, but forgot to style it. Later, you threw in a card without a border, but the user notices. Flutter has theme data for this. In Material App, you can define a global theme, and all buttons, text fields, and cards will automatically use a consistent style. This is what it looks like. I have a detailed tutorial about this on my channel. Your code will be cleaner, and your app will feel unified and pleasant. Mistake 3. No responsiveness for different screens. One of the most painful mistakes Flutter developers make. You've seen it yourself. Everything gets cut off. You launch it on a Pixel 5 emulator, everything's perfect. Open it on an old Xiaomi, everything breaks. Text gets cut off, buttons go off screen, lists don't scroll. Why? Because there's no responsiveness. Here's how the fixed version looks. First, wrap everything in a layout builder to build different UIs based on constraints. Also, use media query to get screen width and height. And of course, flexible and expanded, so widgets can fill the available space properly. But even more important, test your app not only on the emulator, but on real devices, in different orientations, and on different versions of Android and iOS. Remember, if your UI breaks on a small screen, the user will delete your app in three seconds. Mistake four, no user feedback. This is the most common mistake, not only for beginners. You tap a button and nothing happens. Silence. What happened? Did the action complete? Is something loading? Did the app freeze? The user doesn't know and gets nervous. They may even start tapping the button repeatedly. And if your code isn't optimized, this could send multiple requests to the server, which can be critical. Or maybe you have a button that performs a dangerous action, but there's no confirmation. How do we solve this? In Flutter, this is simple. First, show a circular progress indicator when loading, for example, after tapping a button. Second, use snack bar to show if an operation succeeded or failed. Also, use dialog if the action requires confirmation. You can change widget states with set state or use state management like BLOC. Tutorials for both approaches are available on my channel. Here's how it looks. For example, when tapping a button, you immediately see a loading indicator. Then, you get a status message at the bottom via snack bar. And if you're about to do something risky, the confirmation dialog pops up. 
this is very useful. Ignoring this can lead to users accidentally losing important data. Never leave the user guessing. The app should always talk to the user. Subscribe if you want more breakdowns of Flutter mistakes. Leave a like and comment which topic I should cover next.